Let's draw 13 isomers that have the molecular formula C5H10. This molecular formula would fit into the general category CNH2N. This means that alkenes are possible and also cycloalkanes are possible. Both the combinations we need to explore because the degree of unsaturation in this case is equal to 1 plus number of carbon atoms minus number of hydrogen atoms by 2. Therefore, this will be equal to 1 plus 5 minus 10 by 2. So, 6 minus 5 and that is equal to 1. We will either be having one double bond carbon carbon double bond or we will be having a ring. So, let us explore all the possibilities. Number 1, we are going to draw pent 1 in. Let us draw the isomers first in condensed form, then we will also draw the corresponding structure in bond line notation. So, pent 1 in that is CH2 and then double bond CH, CH2, CH2, CH3. On one end of the double bond, we have hydrogen atoms and therefore, cis trans isomerism is not possible in this case. Even though on the other end, we have different groups that is hydrogen as well as propyl. On one end, we have same atoms, two hydrogen atoms and therefore, no cis trans isomerism for this and the name is pent 1 in. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and the corresponding structure in bond line notation will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and then the double bond here. Number 2, we are going to draw pent 2 in but we are going to draw the cis form of pent 2 in that is H3C carbon double bond carbon hydrogen on the same sides and then CH2 CH3. I prefer EZ convention. So, as per kahn ingol prelag rules, let us assign the priority. Atomic number of carbon is higher than atomic number of hydrogen and therefore, this gets top priority and the hydrogen will get least priority. On this side too, carbon gets the top priority, hydrogen gets the least priority. Our low priorities are on the same side. This means that this is a Z isomer or what do you call it cis isomer. It is better to follow the EZ convention whenever you have cis trans isomerism because EZ convention will be much more preferred and somewhat less confusing. So, for example, if you have four different groups around carbon carbon double bond, then the cis trans convention will fall apart. So, therefore, the EZ convention is much more preferred than the cis trans convention. Therefore, the IEPAC name for this will be 2Z that specifies the geometrical isomerism at position 2 and then pent and then 2 in and the corresponding structure in bond line notation will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and then a double bond here. So, let us write the E isomer and that would be H3C and then carbon carbon double bond. Now, the hydrogen atoms are on the opposite side and then CH2, CH3 and the corresponding structure in bond line notation will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and we have a double bond at 2 position. Let us number it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now, let us assign the priorities as per kahn ingol prelog rules. Carbon will get the top priority, hydrogen will get the least priority. Now, our priorities are on the opposite side. Therefore, this is an E isomer and the IEPAC name for this molecule is in parenthesis 2E 
that specifies the geometrical isomerism at position 2 and then pent and then 2 in. Now, we can't draw pent 3 in because if you number it right to left then that will become pent 2 in once again depending upon where the hydrogens are it will become cis or trans. So, we are exhausted with the pentene chain. Therefore, let us move to the butene chain. We are going to draw 2 methyl but 1 in and the structure of 2 methyl but 1 in will be CH2 double bond carbon and then CH3 and then CH2 CH3 and the corresponding structure in bond line notation will be 1, 2, 3, 4. We have a methyl group at 2 position and a double bond at 1 position. Let us number it 1, 2, 3, 4. Just like pent 1 in, we cannot have cis trans isomerism in this case because we have 2 hydrogen atoms on the same side. Therefore, no cis trans isomerism. And the IEPAC name for this molecule is 2 methyl but 1 in. Let us go to isomer 5. We are going to move the position of the methyl group. Let us keep the double bond at one position and therefore, we are going to draw 3 methyl but 1 in and that would be H2C double bond CH and then CH, CH3, CH3. The corresponding structure in bond line notation will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 3 position methyl group and then 1 position double bond 1, 2, 3, 4. So, this is 3 methyl but 1 in. Now, let us move the position of the double bond to the second position and therefore, we are going to draw 2 methyl but 2 in and that would be H3C carbon carbon double bond and then H3C at 2 position and then hydrogen on this side and CH3. Once again, we are not going to have cis trans isomerism in this case because on one side we have 2 methyl groups and therefore, no cis trans isomerism is possible. Let us number it 1, 2, 3, 4 and the corresponding structure in bond line notation will be 1, 2, 3, 4 and then 1 methyl group at 2 position and then the double bond at 2 position and this is 2 methyl but 2 in. Now, we are exhausted with the acyclic isomers. Let us move to the cyclic isomers. For cyclic isomers, I am going to draw the structures directly in bond line notation. So, we can definitely draw cyclopentane. So, that is isomer 7. So, this is cyclopentane and then isomer 8 we can also draw methyl cyclobutane or 1 methyl cyclobutane. So, this is 1 methyl cyclobutane and then number 9 we can also draw 1 comma 1 dimethyl cyclopropane. So, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and then we can also draw ethyl cyclopropane. So, either you can call 1 ethyl cyclopropane or ethyl cyclopropane. So, 1 ethyl cyclopropane. You can avoid 1 because wherever you put the position of the ethyl group that would become 1. So, therefore, ethyl cyclopropane is completely ok for this. So, we got 10 isomers. We have to draw 3 more isomers and then number 11 is we are going to write 1 comma 2 dimethyl cyclopropane with the, both the methyl groups up. So, the wedge basically shows that it is up. By the way, this is a special molecule because even though this molecule has two chiral centers, the overall optical activity of this molecule is 0. It is a chiral. First of all, are you able to recognize that this molecule has two chiral centers? 
because we have a hidden hydrogen here, isn't it? So, this means both the carbon atoms are attached to four different groups. We have a methyl group, we have a hydrogen, we have CH2 here and then CH, CH3. Likewise, for the other carbon too. So, this molecule indeed has two chiral centers and there is a plane of symmetry also in this molecule. Half of the molecule is a mirror image to other half of the molecule. So, as a net result what happens is this molecule becomes a chiral because if one chiral center is rotating the plane polarized light to certain degree in the positive direction, the other chiral center will rotate the plane polarized light in the opposite direction that means in the negative direction. So, therefore, the net optical activity of this molecule will be 0. So, therefore, this is called meso compound. To consider a molecule as meso, minimum two chiral centers we should have. So, this is the condition for the meso case. We should have minimum two chiral centers or more and the molecule should have a plane of symmetry. So, this molecule basically satisfies both the conditions. So, therefore, this is a meso compound and by the way, this molecule as well as this one, both the methyl groups down, they are one and the same. Why? Because if you rotate this molecule 180 degree along the plane of symmetry, whether you rotate clockwise or counterclockwise, it does not matter, you can reach to the other configuration. So, this means that we can perfectly superimpose one over the other if we just rotate them. If you rotate 180 degree and then try to superimpose, we can superimpose them. That is why the molecule is a chiral, even though it has two chiral centers. So, these two are identical, both are considered meso, but we should not take it as two isomers. Whether you write it with both the methyl groups up or both the methyl groups down, it is one and the same. You are basically representing the same molecule. So, therefore, this should be considered as one isomer. Now, we will talk about the IUPAC name of this molecule because to write the IUPAC name, we need to talk about the absolute configuration at both the places. Let us first finish writing the isomer and then number 12, let us keep one methyl group up and then one methyl group down. Let us say this is our mirror plane, then the mirror image will be another isomer because now we can no longer superimpose is not it? No matter how you rotate, we cannot superimpose these two molecules. So, this is number 13. These two are enantiomers because we can no longer superimpose these two molecules. In total, we can write 13 isomers for C5H10. Try to remember that whenever you have chiral centers, if the number of chiral centers are 2, then we are basically expecting 2 to the power n stereoisomers. So, we should get four isomers. However, when you have meso compounds, we will not get four isomers. We will get only three isomers. So, it will not be 2 to the power n, it would be 2 to the power n minus 1. So, we will get only three stereoisomers if you have meso. So, what do you need to check is whether plane of symmetry is there in the molecule or not, whether half of the molecule is a mirror image to other half of the molecule. That is what you need to check, not just chiral centers. Chiral center is one condition. Minimum it should have two chiral centers. On top of that, plane of symmetry must be there. So, that is why we say that all a chiral molecules are not meso, but all meso compounds are a chiral. Let us talk about the absolute configuration of this mesomer because to write the proper IEPAC name for this molecule, we need to fix the absolute configuration. We know that we have two chiral centers in this molecule and both the methyl groups are up. I will show you how to do it for this molecule and maybe for the enantiomers you can do it yourself. To fix the absolute configuration, we need to follow the Kahn ingold prelog rules or simply called CIP rules. Atomic number is the basis for the CIP rules. If a chiral carbon is attached to four different groups, in that case, priorities are decided based on the atomic number. Higher atomic number means higher priority. So, in this case, we have a carbon here that is attached to carbon, hydrogen and then carbon, carbon. So, obviously, hydrogen would get the least priority. Therefore, let us put 4 there. 
but how to assign the priority for the other groups because we have carbon 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 so let's go to the next atom in that case we have hydrogen 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 here because this is a methyl group isn't it this one is a methyl group so we have hydrogen 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 whereas for this carbon it is carbon because we have a methyl group here so that carbon and then this one is another carbon and then we have a hydrogen whereas here we have carbon hydrogen hydrogen so for this carbon this carbon is attached to this carbon so that carbon is mentioned here okay so now we can assign the priority obviously this will get the first priority this will get the second priority this will get the third priority so if you are weaving from here and if you are writing feeser projection for this then it would be four here three here because when we view from this side four is on our right hand side and three is on our left hand side that methyl group is on our left hand side and then two is up one is down but we can't decide the absolute configuration this way because we need to bring the least priority group down so therefore let's do one swap between four and one bring the four down if we do that then one goes here on the right hand side and then two stays where it is three stays where it is now this is counterclockwise isn't it that means yes but we did one swap therefore original is r therefore the absolute configuration for this chiral carbon is r now let's come to the second chiral carbon this one two three here inside the ring specifies the numbering scheme for the cyclopropane so we need to keep it very uniform when you do it for enantiomers just be careful if you are rotating the molecule you need to see whether you are following the numbering scheme properly or not now for the second chiral carbon let's assign the priorities hydrogen is as usual four now this will become a methyl group isn't it because we have a carbon attached to it so therefore this will become three and two will stay as two and this will become one because that is attached to carbon that means this carbon carbon here and then this hydrogen so therefore this will become one so now if we are viewing once again from this side then four here three here now one is up two is down so once again do a swap if we do that then four is down two is here three on the left hand side one is up so this is clockwise isn't it so therefore r but we did one swap therefore the original is yes so therefore for this chiral carbon the absolute configuration is yes so this means the correct IUPAC name for this molecule is in parenthesis 1R, 2S, 1,2 dimethyl cyclopropane. That's the correct IUPAC name for this mesomer. Now you might be wondering why we are specifying 1, 2 here and again 1, 2 here. This 1R, 2S specifies the stereochemistry. Whereas this 1 comma 2 specifies the position of the methyl groups and therefore we have to mention this 1 and 2 two times. We should not write it as 1 or 2 s dimethyl cyclopropane that is wrong. You have to specify specifically the stereochemistry at both the places and then again you have to mention 1 comma 2. That is the proper way of writing IUPAC name whenever you have multiple number of chiral centers. Now you can do it yourself for the enantiomers. I will just give you the final names. So for the enantiomers, do it yourself and these will be the final names for the enantiomers. Assign the priorities as per the Corningold-Prilag rules and then you can verify it.